Good evening and welcome to the February 14th public hearing uh, that's been called regarding the plan financial, the financial plan. Um, the next item or this, the only item on our agenda tonight is for the public hearing to solicit public input for the, on the proposed 2019-2020 annual financial plan. Some citizens have signed up in advance with the school board clerk. We will follow that list first and then allow anyone else who wishes to speak to come to the podium to do so after we've completed the list. We ask that each speaker come to the microphone and clearly identify him or herself. Please give your name and your neighborhood or school affiliation. To assist in tracking your time, there's a timekeeping system on the podium. Speakers will have four minutes uh, in which to speak. The light will be green as you begin your remarks. The yellow light means that you have one minute remaining, and we ask that you stop speaking promptly when the light turns red. The school board is here tonight to hear from you, the community. Speakers should speak directly to the board. We will not be responding to speakers, but we will carefully consider your input and your comments regarding the financial plan. And we appreciate your attendance here tonight and providing your input. Before we come to our first speaker, we're going to ask uh, Mr. Sorensen to make a uh, brief presentation regarding an update, I guess, to where we are with the, with the uh, plan. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Montgomery. I just want to walk through a couple slides that uh, were from the presentation we presented to you guys back in January to go over the budget um, at a high level before we receive public comment. So again, enrollment is a very important piece of our budget. It's uh, a large factor in our revenue and our expenses. We are projecting basically a flat enrollment, uh, not only in the 2019 um, school year, which goes into 2020, but also for the next five years. The operating funds, again, we do have four operating funds. In total, those funds add up to $621.9 million. That is a 4% increase over our current 2019 adopted budget. The largest piece of those operating funds is, is the general fund at $505.5 million. And just all while I'm on the slide, just one thing, the school nutrition fund um, it does show a decrease of $2.7 million from the adopted budget to the proposed budget. But that is, again, getting the budget more in line with our historical spending and revenue trends. This is really the same information, just in a, a pie chart. The pie chart on the left is the current year, the 2019 adopted budget, and the pie chart on the right is the proposed 2020 budget. The current budget is $597.8 million, and the 2020 budget, as it's proposed, is $621.9 million. So focusing on the general fund, because that is the largest piece of our operating budget, um, again, pie chart on the left is 2019. Pie chart on the right is proposed 2020 budget. This shows our expenditures by the categories of report to the state. So the instruction is uh, the largest by far category in our budget. It is increasing from 75.7% in the current budget to 76% even in the 2020 budget. The revenue, and this will be updated as we go through the process, but it does show that the county and the state are our two largest funding partners. And you'll see that across the Commonwealth. Uh, in 2019, the county provided 43.5% of our budget, and the state provided 54.3%. Uh, we don't have those exact percentages uh, for 2020. We'll, again, get those as we go through the budget process. So we are tonight on February 14th, our public hearing. We do have several steps to go through before the budget becomes effective July 1st of 2019. Um, we will be meeting with, the, with our teachers or on the 19th to go over the budget with them. February 28th, we'll come to you for approval. Then we'll go to the county for consideration of the Board of Supervisors budget. On March 20th, we will meet with the Board of Supervisors at 9 o'clock at the County Government Center to go over the budget in detail and answer any questions they may have in, in your approved budget. April 9th, the county will have their public hearing at the County uh, Government Center in the West End. 23rd, the Board of Supervisors will adopt the budget, they're scheduled to adopt the budget. <coughs> May 9th, it will come back to you for approval, and then on July 1st, once everything is approved by both the Board of Supervisors and the School Board, it will become effective as the 2020 operating budget. All right. Thank you very much. I believe that, uh, so we do have two people signed up, uh, or two groups of people that signed up ahead of time, and I think they may have just come in. Mr. Bukowski, if you would come forward, sir, and you'll be followed by uh, some students as well. That's fine. If, if the group would come forward, you missed the preliminary remarks. It, it, 
the uh, presentation, you, you'll be provided four minutes. There's a timekeeping system. It'll be green when you begin. It will turn yellow at three minutes, and we ask that you stop speaking at four. Uh, so hopefully your remarks are tailored in that regard. She did. Okay. So. Very familiar with that. Um, just so you know, we are the blue cheese that are based out of Deep Run High School. This is uh, one of our seniors who's going to start off, and then we have some of the people who all right, and as each student, as you begin, would you please make certain and, and share your name and, and uh, your uh, grade level, please? All right. Um, I'm Piyush Chasani. I'm a senior at Deep Run High School, and we are Blue Cheese Robotics, a team based out of Deep Run High School. Uh, one of our team's core values is to advocate for STEM education, and today we are advocating for the Math Science Innovation Center. Uh, we have been a team for 16 years and currently have 83 active members. We would love to sh be here in force, but uh, unfortunately this is the middle of our build season and we're not able to all be here because uh, we have to have our uh, robot completed by Tuesday. So almost all of our team members over the years have attended programs at MSIC um, and our team believes that our hands-on learning, learning programs are the most effective way to uh, teach STEM, as do most educators in the field. Uh, classes at MSIC do just that and are even more relevant today when they, uh, than they uh, were in years past. I would like some of our team members to share some thoughts with you on the subject. <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm Leo Bukowski. I'm a 10th grader at Deep Run High School and I'm also on the robotics team. And the opportunity to be exposed to STEM programs at a young age is critical in getting kids to pursue STEM careers. Um, when I was in elementary school, I took, two, I took a lot of classes at the Math Science Innovation Center, two of which were robotics classes, and I loved them because they were hands-on. And I actually got to build robots, which is an opportunity I'd never had before. And then again in middle school, I took another robotics class that was actually sponsored by the governor school here. And that really um, opened me up to robotics and it's one of the reasons that I joined the robotics team. And I can honestly say that without the Math Science Innovation Center's camps, I would never have joined the robotics team and I would not be where I am today. And I also feel that STEM will be very critical in creating a 21st century workforce in Henrico County and in Virginia. Um, the programs offered at the Math Science Innovation Center um, are very hands-on and they allow the kids to actually experience and do what they're being taught in the classes. And that's really good because it, it's tailored towards um, engaging the students rather than um, state and um, national testing standards. Um, they get to experience topics that aren't covered in schools and anywhere else really. And I feel that these um, programs are really important. They can also um, be experienced as field trips so they actually get even more hands-on experience. They can talk to experts and they're just really good all around. And these camps are also taught by teachers um, and at no cost, so the teachers can go and hone their craft while they're not in school. And I just think that that's really important and I think that all this is really important and I don't think that funding should be cut for it. Thank you, Leah. Hello, my name is Alec Ritchie and I am a freshman at Deep Run High School. When we inquired about why Henrico County would not be, be able to fund Math Science Innovation Center, we received an email from the school board that stated the, the monies that would be used to fund the Math Science Innovation Center will instead be used to reduce computer fees from $50 to $25. Please don't reduce opportunities for children to learn about STEM in an effort to reduce fees. The Math Science Innovation Center especially touched me when I took a class for circuitry. I really learned with my friends how to interact with computers and mess with them and make things work on my own accord without having to look at a standardized project. As our school board, you should be protecting educational opportunities, not taking them away. When you take educational opportunities like the Math Science and Innovation Center away, you put Henrico County students at a competitive disadvantage in the job markets of today and tomorrow. Thank you, Alex. Hello, everyone. I'm Sahil Jaiswal, a sophomore at Deep Run High School. I think that the Math Science Innovation Center is absolutely imperative for the well-being and success of our students. First off, according to a study posted on the Virginia Department of Education website, the STEM cluster is expected to expand its employment in Virginia by 6% through 2024. 
It provided approximately 67,000 jobs statewide in 2014 and is expected to provide about 4,000 more by 2024. If Henrico is reducing or limiting options for STEM education today, then these jobs will go to other municipalities or remain unfilled. For me personally, the Math Science Innovation Center genuinely touched me on an extremely deep level. Initially, I really had no idea what they were, but then I got engaged with their programs, the science fair in particular. I submitted a project not really expecting you know, anything at all. I thought I'd lose. I thought I'd go there, learn something, come back you know, with some new knowledge. And I actually won. I won second place in my category of zoology. And this got me hooked on scientific research. Now, this year, I've submitted to the Math Science Innovation Center Science Fair, Metro Richmond Science Fair, again. And I'm planning on submitting to the Virginia Junior Academy of Sciences. Next year, I'm making it my goal to submit my project to the International Science and Engineering Fair so that I can expand my knowledge, expand my horizons, and open up new doors of education for myself. During the program, Itself, I also was able to very effectively determine what I wanted to do in my future. There was a physics PhD present at the science fair who was giving a presentation on nanotechnology. And I had a very nice like 30 minute conversation with him. And through that, I was able to determine the experience of a physics PhD, the job, everything about it, I was able to learn. And now I've set my sights on becoming a physics PhD. And my love for scientific research, my determination to get a physics, uh, physics PhD in the future is all a cause, is all the Math Science, and Math Science Innovation Center is completely responsible for all of this. It's touching not only me, but other students all across the county. I think that this program is important and funding should not be cut from it so that hearts can be continued, can be touched continuously around the county. Please. Quick. I uh -huh. think we should be within. I, we had two slots, so you, um, you're fine. The um, I, and again, I am Stan Bukowski, and this, we are the the Blue Cheese, uh, one of the mentors uh, of the club, and actually the president of the uh, Boosters Club. When we got information about your current budget, uh, you heard from just some of the kids who have been impacted by the Math Science Innovation Center. Uh, we're here to, to advocate for STEM, for you to relook at your budget. Um, the, the plan not to fund the MSIC will deny access to thousands of Henrico students to a valuable regional STEM education resource. It's located right here in our own county. Why wouldn't we fund something like that? Um, additionally, the educators in Henrico County will be denied those same resources, which is part of what we should be implementing for these students. What do the city and citizens truly in Henrico County get in return for you doing this? If you truly use it to re reduce funds, and that's what exactly is what it said in the email you sent to us, um, they get less than one full tank of gas a year for everybody, for every student in Henrico County to lose access to the Mass Science Innovation Center, and the opportunity to learn STEM in a hands-on way that impacts so many children in our, in our community, because no matter what you try to do in the classroom setting, it will not be the same as what can be done at the Mass Science Innovation Center in the hands-on, creative way without the pressures of trying to reach some type of grade or something like that. Um, as leaders of our school system, you need to continue to promote education in the STEM fields, not find, not get rid of something as good as the Mass Science Innovation Center to save a few dollars in the average pocket of the Henrico family. We thank you for your time. Uh, we hope you will take this into consideration before and, and figure out another way to, to fund that. And I am a parent. One of these is my child. I'd happily pay the extra $25 for those computer fees for the kids of today to be able to access what's available at the Mass Science Innovation Center. Th thank you. Thank, no, thank you, and thank you for, to the others for coming out so far and uh, sharing with us what's been shared with some by email and all. 
Uh, there, that concludes the list of those folks who have signed up previously. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a moment of personal privilege. Please, certainly. I want to thank the Blue Cheese Kids. I've been to a lot of your competitions, and I know that one of the foundations of your club is advocacy. You've been to D.C. You advocate on every um, for, front that there is for robotics and for uh, STEM education. I really appreciate you all coming to be here today. I did have one quick question if you would ask it um, answer it for me your circuitry class and your ro robotics class were those taken in the summer Tonight, our first is uh, Holly Freeman, and she will be followed by Sharon Jones. So, Ms. Jones, if you want to move down to the front uh, and be ready to go, that'd be great. Good afternoon. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you all for coming. I'm uh, Holly Freeman, the director of the Math Science Innovation Center. Regardless of what you decide, the fact that students have come out to talk about their experience, that is the work. They love their robot to come. <laughs> That's big. That is the work. And uh, since you've said everything, that most, almost everything that I want to say, I will not uh, continue with that. Um, I will say, though, that the four cornerstones of your strategic plan will take time, energy, resources to, to complete. And two of them, the, the equity um, cornerstone, let me talk about that one in particular, um, has a is what you all are talking about. It has a, it, the equity issue is the issue in Henrico. I was a Henrico student. My daughter was a Henrico student. We live on the West End. She went to school in the East End. This um, question, this issue is not about the 12 or the 20 or the 200 or the 2,000 students who get a spot to go to a special school on the other side of town or in a different division. It's for the 28,000 students that the Math Science Innovation Center impacts from Henrico every year. We are committed to working with students not just from a particular neighborhood, but students come to the Math Science Innovation Center across neighborhoods, across race, economics, experience, to work on meaningful projects, which is part of what you have written about in the strategic plan. Lifelong learning, hands-on, uh, learning experiences. Those are the experiences that students have Monday through Friday, Saturdays, and also in the summer. Um, you've heard from the students, you have done an eloquent job, so I will read what the division leads have said about the value add of the Math Science Innovation Center and what the needs are in the district from their viewpoint. These are the science specialists, the math specialists, the STEM coaches, etc. And I have to take my glasses off because I haven't figured out the bifocal part yet. Um, division needs, project-based learning, cooperative learning, assessment design. Um, many teachers continue to struggle with successful integration of the scientific process to, see, to teach science content, um, lesson planning, assessment alignment, 21st century skill development, and it goes on and on. We have quite a bit of data from your division administrators about what the division needs are. The value add of the Math Science Center, in their words, the educator and residents. We have a, um, a grant from both Altria and the Robbins Foundation to provide instructional coaching in schools. We have someone embedded in Wilder as we speak, not just as, a, as an extra person in the room, but to work with teachers and teacher teams and school principals to think about what is the need of that particular teacher um, and then how is, can we best support them through looking at student work, um, looking at case studies, that's yellow. Um, um, so that is a program that both superintendents have um, put their um, um, impetus behind and also that businesses have done as well. Weekday lessons is a value add that your folks are seeing. Opportunities for students to explore their passions more deeply um, than they might be able to in the classroom. 
offering high quality professional development. The MSIC brings hands-on lessons to our teachers and students with resources that teachers may not have access to. MSIC provides additional applications and extensions of content, uh, professional development, and MSIC lessons of professional development support our learning goals by modeling effective and engaging instruction. So given the fact that, again, your cornerstones will take resources, we are prepared to provide those resources for you, again, across the whole division for the 28,000 students um, that we serve. Right, I'm gonna stop. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks for observing the time. Ms. Jones, please. And if there's anyone else who wishes to speak tonight, if you can move up to the front so you'll be ready to go too. My name is, good evening to you. My name is Sharon Jones. I am an employee of the Math Science Innovation Center. I am a senior account technician there. I'm also a grandmother of two students in the Henrico County Schools. Uh, in about the year 1986 to 2006, I worked at Richmond Public Schools in the Finance Department. And in working in the Finance Department, our function or responsibility was to handle the invoices, the checks, the reimbursements, the accounting. And my responsibility was the Math Science Center. So all I knew about the Math Science Center, in addition to when I was very young, I worked with the 4-H group that was at the Math Science Center. I just aged myself. Uh, but those were the only things that I knew about the Math Science Center. In 2014, I had the opportunity to come to the Math Science Center as a senior accountant technician. But what the experience did for me is that I understood and learned what I was paying for. Sometimes when you're just paying for items, paying the supplies, doing reimbursements, and you don't really understand the function of a thing, then you don't really understand the concept behind the importance of the Math Science Center. So when I got there, I learned why I paid Carolina Biological because of the bats that we sent out in kits so that we could have a spectacular program as a virtual lesson. I also learned why it was important for us to have professional development because we taught teachers and educators hands-on education. I also learned why it was important for me when I was in the finance department to schedule flights and hotel rooms for our science fair participants to go to ISEF in order for them to compete on a national level. And so you may be asking yourself, why is that important? Well, the reason I wanted to give you that backdrop is because sometimes we get more, um, because we see a number, we don't really understand what that number means. And I wanted to come to you from that perspective that as a budget line at the Math Science Center on your huge budget, sometimes you can lose sight of what that number is all about. That number is about kids who have an opportunity to experience hands-on learning. That number is about kids and educators who are able to come and take tools back to their classroom. That number is about a science sphere that we have where we can invite students to come in and look at Mars on a sphere. That number is about our Challenger Center where we're the only center that is in this region that people can come and learn how to go out to Mars. So the Math Science Center is not just a budget line, it's an experience and it's an opportunity for our children to learn. And even greater than that, it is an opportunity for our educators to learn skills and tools to have a hands-on experience at the Math Science Center. So I said all of that to say that I hope that you would reconsider the ability to use funds, to pull the funds away from the Math Science Center and find another way to make sure that we can supply the things that are needed for the students in Henrico County. And I wanted to just reemphasize that the Math Science Center is also the place where I pay for ladybugs to come and sit in our refrigerator until somebody can take them to use them in the classroom. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Before the next speakers come forward, I apologize. I've got to depart to get to another uh, location. Reverend Cooper will serve as a chair in my absence. I will go back and listen to all of the comments. They're all being videoed, and I will go back and listen to all of the comments for those who are going to share now, and I appreciate those who have come already. So thank you, and uh, I apologize again. Thank you, Ms. Montgomery. You may approach the podium, and you have four minutes. Thank you so much. Could you tell us your name, if you don't mind? Lane. I speak Lane. Lane. 
Yes, ma'am. I speak to you as a resident of Henrico County, a former teacher in one of your schools, and now I currently work at the Mass Science Innovation Center. That's what we're when I started my teaching career, I would paying. not have been successful if it were not for the center. The professional development that I received from them at their conferences and their workshops got me through my first few years as a teacher and allowed me to be effective at my job. I didn't receive those resources at my school. I was given a mentor, but my mentor was on their way out for retirement, and I had no one there at my school to help me. So if it wasn't for those abilities, I would not have been the effective teacher that I was, and I never would be able to work there now. As a teacher, I also brought in the center to work with my students when I was at Brooklyn as a teacher. I can't tell you how much that meant to them. It helped me because it helped me see how these expert teachers were when I was new, and it gave these opportunities to my students. I gave them the flyers and they went to the weekend programs whenever they could and they would come back and they would rave about it. And I too, when I grew up, lived off of the Mass Science Center. I grew up in Hanover County, but it was still a very important part of my childhood. And so when I became a teacher and used them all the time, I couldn't have made it without them. Now that I work there, try not to get emotional, sorry. The looks on faces, I've been at Elko Middle School the last two days working with students there. And they have been amazed by the things that I have been able to bring to them. We have been doing science and math classes. And it is just eye-opening to them so they can see these applications of what they're able to do. I hate for that to be taken away from them, especially as someone who used to work in your school. I know that accommodations are made if it's just about that computer fee. I know that accommodations are made when they're needed to be made. And I would hate to see the whole county lose out on everything that the center has to offer for something like that. So I just please ask for you to reconsider this. I know when I worked at Brooklyn, this was an option. But we were given an option as teachers, as students, to speak out about the center. So I know this is not the first time you've considered taking it off of the budget. I wrote a four-page letter to you then or whoever was here then, and my students wrote letters. And you went against that decision and you decided to keep the funding, and I just really hope that you do that now, because I don't think you understand everything that you would be taking away from the students and the families in the county and the teachers. I know you have new teachers coming in every year, and our professional development, I lead a lot of them now, and I work with those teachers. I even work with some of them outside of our workshops. They have my card, they call me, they email me, I help them out whenever I can because I have that ability to at the center and I just really hope you reconsider. So stop now before I get emotional. Thank you, Ms. Lane, I really appreciate that. Could you please state your name, madam? Certainly, my name is Bridget Westhoven and I'm a multi-year mentor with um, Blue Cheese Robotics 1086. I think the kids did a really good job of stating their own case. From a parent's perspective, I, I wasn't going to speak, but I'd like to share that um, I sent all three of my kids to both um, programs during the year and programs during the summer at the Math Science Center. One of my um, students eventually ended up becoming a teacher. The other two are studying, are currently in college. One is studying um, engineering at Purdue and the other is studying computer science and math up at George Mason. And my experience as a parent is that as wonderful as a job as our teachers do in the classroom, they are not able to do the kind of individualized hands-on curriculum that really brings science alive um, for, for the students who are, are the most likely to engage um, with STEM activities. And we really need to have more opportunities like this not less. Um, I basically work part-time unpaid as a volunteer for Blue Cheese and the reason I do that is because I've seen the transformative, I mean life-changing transformation that it makes in students lives when they have the opportunity to get hands-on working on coding, working on robots, working on physics, working on all of this stuff. Um, I don't know if, if one of the kids shared this but we, we were all talking at the build site the other day about you know what did you study at the Math Science Center? Because all of our kids have taken classes there, whether it's field trips or um, academic enrichment or camps or whatever. They've, they've all done it, you know, with, without, without um, a single exception. And one of the kids turned to me, he's like, holy cow, I've got a buddy of mine who is studying meteorology in college. 
he didn't even know what meteorology was until he went to a program at the Mass Science Center. I mean, this, this child changed the course of his life based on one class that he took at the Mass Science Center. And that's the kind of opportunity that you would be taking away from all of the students of the county. And I tell people all the time when I go out and do um, enrichment activities or demos in the community, we'll do stuff at the various libraries or with the elementary schools or whatever. The only reason our team exists in the way that it does, and we've more than doubled in size over the last three years, is not because of money that we get from the school board. It's not because of money we get from, from, the, from the school that we go to. It's because I work my tail off raising funds um, that allow us to pay the, um, the fees for um, competition and to buy materials. We, we get sponsors. Not every school has somebody like me who can spend as much time as I do to do that kind of thing. All of these children deserve to have hands-on STEM activities available to them. Even the kids who don't go to Deep Run High School who have somebody who's willing to and able to make that kind of commitment to them, and they need you to make that commitment to them, that it's worth $25 a student or whatever it is um, to have that opportunity available to every single child in Henrico. Okay, and I, like I said, I didn't mean to talk, but I feel extremely strongly about this, so thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Ms. Russell. Good afternoon, good evening. Good evening. My name is Alexandra Wright. I'm 14 years old, and I'm a sophomore at Code RVA Regional High School, and I'm also a member of my home school, which is Deep Runs Robotics Team Blue Cheese, hence the cheese head and the Code RVA t-shirt. And I'm here to ask my school board to continue its partnership with the Math and Science Center. So schools have access to laptops and smart boards and maybe even 3D printers, but we don't have access to full aquaponics labs, animal labs, the new NASA launch simulator, and lots of other cool science labs that the Math and Science Center offers. The Math and Science Center allowed me to take classes as a kid in nanotechnology, something that I'm still interested in. I remember at one middle school conference, I attended, I learned about different water purification processes in less developed countries. And so this was really interesting to me because I didn't know how easy it was to determine how clean and pure water is. The Math and Science Center exposed me to advanced math, hands-on workshops, and numerous other Saturday morning programs, all of which I enjoyed. So the math, these chances give kids a chance to personalize their learning outside of our SOL-specific curriculums and learning experiences in school and in the classroom. No tests, just enjoyment and learning because it's your passion. My younger sister is currently taking the six week computer science course and she's loving it. I ask that you continue to give Henrico County students these opportunities by continuing to fund the Math and Science Center. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wright. Yes, ma'am. Abby Woodard, uh, I honestly was not expecting to speak today. I normally am way way too nervous however this is kind of the effect that the the science and math and science center has on me because for for years and years in in uh elementary school middle school and even into high school i had like severe anxiety so i didn't really do anything didn't make friends or anything um however science is kind of science and math is kind of the thing that like i actually did during all of this especially the science part is the part that I actually felt like I could make a difference in the world using science. And it just, it expands your, your horizons so much to be able to like learn about this stuff and be like, wow, there is a world outside of my house, outside of my town. And you can, you can do so much more than it actually seems. And also my mom is a, uh, as, is a teacher. So she helped a lot in that. Like when I was too depressed to like be at the house that much, she was a science teacher. She would bring it to me, but like, a really great opportunity to like continue to like learn and and have this like we like 100 years or 200 years or however many years ago none of this would be possible your world was your town and and whatever you heard on the news or the radio and now we have these centers and and all this like stuff that we can learn and we can actually do stuff with it and i think it's i think it's like both really important and incredible that we have these opportunities and i think that very, very important to, to keep the opportunities that we're providing for students, not only because you're learning, but also because it is expanding 
your knowledge of the world and what you see and your community. And it's, it's just not really more I can say about it. It's just one of the most incredible opportunities. And to sacrifice that for half price computer, I think personally would make me just incredibly, I don't know the word for it, sad maybe, disappointed. It's just such a thing to give up for something that I'm not going to say is, is small, because it's not. It's a computer. It's also a lifeline to the rest of the world. But, but something that doesn't necessarily provide as much, as much community, as much learning, as much guided opportunities as a program like this does. So I think it's, I think it's a really important thing that we keep, and we keep supporting and, and sending kids to, and adults even, or whatever. Anyone, everyone. So I think it's just really important. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Alice Thompson. Um, my son, he's a, he attends Arthur Ashe Elementary School. I'm the PTA president at Arthur Ashe Elementary School, and I appreciate you all, you know, listening to us about the Math Science Center. Um, my son is a third grader at Arthur Ashe Elementary School. And on Saturdays, they have a program called um, Little Innovators. And I would say he has attended three classes so far, and it's hard to get into those classes. Every t you have to get into those. You have to sign up early, because if you don't sign up early, it won't be a spot for you. Now, when he attends those classes, it is always full, always full. And it's so, so wonderful. He has learned about electronics. He has built a robot at the age of nine, and he's a third grader. Now, I have wrote an email to Vice, Press, Vice Chairman Roscoe, and I, again, thank you for allowing us to speak. And I have to read this letter that my husband sent to Mr. Roscoe. And bear with me here. Over the past several sessions, I have been proud to attend the programs with my son. This is my husband speaking. It was also exciting to see the youth, parents, and instructors enjoying each session. I have yet to attend a session that was not 100% attendance. Most importantly, these programs show within our county a great interest and enthusiasm for taking advantage of the opportunity to expand and enlighten the mind. In a world where competition and innovation ensure our survival, it would behoove me to believe that Henrico County would cut short any opportunity to remain the best in Virginia. Henrico is the best. The foundation of all culture is the youth. Please give our youth the chance to shine. Now, I am an engineer, at, and I work for Henrico County Public Utilities. And STEM, STEAM, is important for our kids in the future. And for you all to cut this short, it would be a shame. It would be a shame. So I hope you listen to all of us, everyone in here who is supporting the Math Science Center. That's all I would like to say. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Juanita Sharp, um, and I'm speaking to you as a really nice follow-up, um, as a voice from the future. Um, I'm a former faculty member in STEM uh, universities. I've worked at several universities. And having students exposed to opportunities like those provided uh, by the Math Science Innovation Center were, was just an unbelievable help in getting scholars and students um, excited about science and to maintain their excitement about science throughout their careers. This uh, exposure is the first step, these students, on the road to technological innovations, to job creation, and to um, scientific and health innovations. I'd hate to see this cut short um, through these opportunities for these students 
so that um, we can save a few dollars. I think what the math science innovation represents and presents as opportunities is invaluable and is a wonderful way for these students to ultimately come into my hands um, as scholars uh, in, at the college and university level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sharp. Um, my name is Emily Woodard. I'm a ninth grader at Deep Run High School, and I'm in the Blue Cheese Robotics team. Um, so I'd just like to start out by saying that I feel <coughs> incredibly lucky and honored that I, I've grown up in this county. Uh, I've been going to, I went to uh, elementary school, middle school, and now high school in this county. And everything that I've been to ex exposed to, not only at the schools, but uh, through opportunities such as the Math Science Innovation Center uh, and different things uh, through this county have just been really amazing and I think will help me so much in my life um, as I'm growing up, as I'm uh, learning what I want to do. Uh, and the Math Science Innovation Center has been a really big part of that. I think that it's an incredibly important resource of this county um, and it's one of the reasons that I feel so lucky and honored to be part of this county. Um, and not only um, does it provide opportunities for students um, to learn about STEM, to be inspired, but it also provides opportunities for teachers. Um, my mother is a teacher uh, in this county, and um, only a few uh, months or weeks ago, uh, she actually went on a field trip to the Math Science Innovation Center with her students. And she came home that day, and she was talking about it, and she uh, was talking about how she felt inspired by the teachers there, by their lessons and their, uh, their commitment uh, and excitement to help these children, uh, these kids. Um, and you know, it inspired me too. And I know that inspired her to go and want to do more hands-on learning in her classroom, to expose uh, these students even more and um, so Math and Science Innovation Center, it inspires these kids to continue uh, to want to learn more about STEM and to seek discovery, um, but it also inspires teachers to want to be able to teach their students better, to have more hands-on uh, experiences. And even if they might not be able to do everything that the Math and Science Innovation Center can, that's why we have the Math and Science Innovation Center so that uh, they can reach out and bring their students there, have lessons and have uh, experienced people in these fields come to their classroom uh, to be able to do this. I think that it's really a question of what is worth more, the experiences and the inspiration that comes from the Math and Science cen uh, Center or the cut of the budget of, uh, of the fee for computers. Uh, I would really like you to consider to keep the budget for the Math Science Innovation Center just because it is so important to so many kids and I want everyone, everyone else coming after me, all of the other children, to be able to be as lucky as I am. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Appreciate you. Good evening. My name is Nicole Colon and that's C-O-L-O-N. Say it like you spray it, so that make it easy, right? As a teacher, I put that name on the board many times, so I share with you um, that. But I'm here pleading with you as a teacher and also a parent. And um, for one, I'm here as an advocate for the Mass Science Innovation Center. And I bet some of you can raise your hand, have you all attended when you were younger? Because it's been here for 52 years. It's a place where um, the north side, the south side, the east side, the west side came together. It was a, it's, a, it's a place where it didn't matter what your reading scores were, but that you were on board and you could do, that you had hands-on things to work with. Um, with that also, as a teacher, I share with you that the professional developments have been able to give me that inspiration that you need as teachers need, that um, fuel, um, that just that little spark of energy 
of enlightenment that you can share with students that brings them to a bigger, better place. We all know that STEM is it's science, it's technology, it's engineering and math. As we look into our workforce, we know that we're gonna need to enhance our students and make sure that they have these skills. The Mass Science Innovation Center is there, has been here as a shining star of Henrico, being a place where the Metro City Science Fair is. And you guys all know this year, I know you have your invitations. It's gonna be at Miles. And we um, make sure that you all come and then make your decision. I may, you know, make sure that you all have an invitation to come and walk around, experience the students' work. This was inspired by the teachers who believe in science and also the students that were given the opportunity to, to actually explore these amazing ideas that they have. Um, there are so many children that apply for this. And this, again, this, just the science fair has spun off where we actually get to represent Virginia on a national level. So again, Henrico, because we are right here on your, in your area, in your property, you're represented there every year. Um, cu couple quick facts. Uh, I was going to bring it out, right? Can read this, right? This is open thing. Well, I just wanted to share, there's so much. You have Saturday programs, there's enrichment programs, there's things going on in the summertime that students have the opportunity to do to enhance and get some extra care with. Um, the professional development has, um, just in one year, has over a thousand teachers that it's touched. Um, for example, just the Saturday and Sunday enrichment programs, there's 3,380 three students that were able to have four to five, well, actually 10 different opportunities to be in front of computers, coding, um, math, little innovators, discoverers, um, and also the Richmond Science Fair. We've, you've been here for 52 years. Don't forget, it's an important step. People remember this place. And they, I go out as I advocate and share this information and people who are 30 and 40 years old saying, I remember walking through the NASA room. I remember being in the science room that had the spiders and I was scared. I've been there when um, they started just using computers and starting to help students code. Again, it's been there, has always been. It's a foundation of your county. Don't forget about it. We're here, we're strong. And thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you at the science fair. Thank you, Ms. Colon, I appreciate you. Good evening, my name is Alicia Comer Wright, um, and I am a former full-time teacher, currently homebound teacher, um, as well as parent um, of uh, Alexandra Wright. I just wanted to share um, from both of those perspectives um, my thoughts. You know, I started taking my daughter Alexandra to the Science Museum probably when she was, about, I'm sorry, Science Museum, Math and Science Center, well, both of them actually, when she was about five or six and she started asking um, how come spiders don't get stuck in their webs? And someone told me there was a spider room. And so that was like our, one of our first workshops that we did together. And if you haven't seen the spider lady over there, she's absolutely fantastic. Um, but we, over the years, continued doing the Young Innovators Program. I think it was called something else way back then. Um, my, one, of, one of my other children are currently taking, um, Alexandra mentioned, uh, a six-week computational computer science course over at the Math and Science Center. And she's voluntarily going and she's loving it. And it's from nine to two every Saturday morning and she's going. Um, and she loves doing it. And my five-year-old, uh, we just went to one of the parent children Saturday mornings uh, back in January and she loved that too. So my younger children are looking forward to doing all of the workshops and the middle school conferences that they were able to see their big sister do and have heard about, and as she brings back cool swag that they envy, and they're looking forward to doing all those things. Um, one of the biggest shames, though, that I see, and, and I guess you guys may have mentioned this because we came in a little bit late, is that if you discontinue your partnership, the students will no longer be able to participate in the science fair, is that correct? You know, that's some of the information that's going out. Do you know if that's accurate? No? I was gonna say, because that's really, 
big thing for our students, right? The Richmond Metro Science Fair. There is a private school science fair, but I can tell you as someone who's seen that, it's nowhere near compared to the Greater Richmond Science Fair um, with the number of students and students of much more diverse backgrounds and they're doing projects on all sorts of things and they're working with all these great you know, partnerships and laboratories and doing all this great work and having this great experience and they're doing it as public school students, not as private school students with private tuitions and parents who can then afford to pay the extras that go along with that. So I'm really hoping that as I have a 10th grader who still has two years to continue doing science fair and I've got children who are coming up that they get the opportunity and if you discontinue your partnership, that would be a really strong loss because I know that we've had quite a few children or students in Henrico County that have gone on to compete at the state and national levels. So I think that would be a real negative impact. Um, I would just like to encourage you to continue the partnership. I've enjoyed it as a teacher, I've enjoyed it as a parent, um, and I've just enjoyed it having it in our community. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Is there anyone else that would like to address us this afternoon? If so, please come forward now. Having no other um, persons present who'd like to address us, we want to make an announcement in regards to our meeting dates. Our upcoming meeting is February the 28th, 2019, 2 p.m. work session, 6.30 monthly meeting, Newbridge Auditorium. Uh, meeting time for work session may be adjusted if needed. Um, if there's nothing else, this meeting is adjourned.